Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the People's Food Summit uh, 2024. This is the African segment, and I'm here with the incredible Frances Davis, um, a sister, friend, and colleague from the beautiful country of Zambia. Frances is um, an activist, um, practitioner, facilitator of uh, agroecology and uh, seed and food systems. She's done expansive work uh, through different networks and organizations across the region. She's also Africa-wide, um, but her main role is activism. And today she brings us um, the story of how she's uh, been working to raise communities to the awareness of really <clears throat> pushing back on the greenwashing and the green revolution agenda and how they're helping farmers to do both agroecology while resisting the greenwashing information that's going around. Francis, you're welcome. Thank you. It really is an honor to be here. Thank yeah. you so much, Precious. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm really just going to welcome you to just dive in, introduce yourself a, a little more because I know you're, you're a lady of many thank skills. You. And um, Thank you. also go ahead and talk about um, the state of things now on the continent and some of the work that you've been doing with uh, farmers. Mm. Thanks so much, Precious. So I'm Frances Davies and my home is in Zambia uh, and also with the Zambian Alliance for Agroecology and Biodiversity, which is a national network organization that I was uh, one of the founding members of the Secretariat of in 2015, although the network started many years before that. Um, and I mean, ZAB started really as a resistance organization of farmers, civil society organizations, scientists, and activists who were concerned about what was going on in our food system, and particularly what was going on uh, in relation to seed, because seed really is the start of everything. And so this is where a lot of our work starts, is um, thinking about seed, working with farmers on reviving and restoring farmer-led seed systems, and through that, the entry point into the entire rest of the food system, because you control seed, you control agriculture, you control food, and you control people. So this is really where we start. So I live and work in Zambia, but I also work in the region and with uh, other African continental groups. Uh, with So firstly, with the Knowledge Hub for Organic Agriculture and Agroecology in Southern Africa, with Sky, the Seed and Knowledge Initiative, um, and then also with AFSA, the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa. And all of these organizations really are connecting with farmers on the ground Bringing, bringing knowledge, resources, skills, capacity, thinking, and really what, what the work is about reviving and building energy on the ground. And through this, we're seeing that, you know, there are conversations and movements and practices happening in spaces that just wasn't there 10 years ago. And so this is something, the theme of what we're celebrating today in Africa is hope, resilience, and abundance through agroecology and regenerative actions. And this is really at the heart of this. And we can see that. And this is a huge change and something really to celebrate uh, compared, to, compared to many, many years ago. But unfortunately, in the same sense as we are making the most incredible strides, uh, this is also challenging business as usual. And so as we are seeing farmers' power grow on the ground and people standing up and saying enough is enough, the impacts of climate change are real and raw. So too, business, as usual, is double downing on their policies and their pushback and their very, very sinister tactics, which keep the industrial food system locked in place and keep African citizens disempowered and our food system in control of a very few number of multinational corporations and our continent increasingly hungry and unhealthy and incredibly sick. And this really impacts women the most and children. Zambia, for instance, is one of the most malnourished countries in the world. And yet, yet we have everything in this country, we have everything. We have water, we have the most incredible forest and soil and capacity and spirit. 
And so there is something fundamentally wrong with what is going on on our continent. And we can see that in the meetings with with agencies, with our government, in all of the policies that we that we connect to, we can see this invisible hand coming through of where policies are are really being formulated. And despite what farmers are asking again and again and again, this has not been translated into policy and translated through into, into changing programs to funding infrastructure for agroecology on the ground, which is where we so desperately need it uh, in the face of very, very uh, critical um, climate change and biodiversity loss. So I would like to start really first um, with, with a short video that actually encapsulates this from the voice of farmers. From Petronella, who is a farmer that we work with in Zambia, who is a leader and an incredible inspiration. And she's well known across Zambia for her seed. And so if you will let me share this, please, with you. Yes, um, go ahead and, and share the screen. This seed was given to us by God. We have sovereign right to this seed. It is a symbol of our freedom to be who we are, to grow what we want to grow, to eat what we want to eat, to share what we want to share. It's a birthright and it is a symbol of our cultural heritage. I found my life's purpose growing this local seed and distributing it far and wide. And yes, I've been threatened, but I'm not phased. It's something that I'm prepared to die for. No one has got the right to come and dictate to us which seed to grow, which seed to keep, which seed to share. What right do they have? Can they be above God who gave us this seed? Let me tell you one thing. Every day I get on my knees and I pray to God and I come against these multinationals that are trying to destroy our seed sovereignty. And they will not succeed. You will not succeed. At the end of the day, it is these bullies, these multinationals who benefit, not us. We are slowly killing ourselves and we are slowly killing off the environment while they go away happy with the fat bank accounts. You cannot fight God. You can intimidate us. You can bully me, but you will never succeed against God. And I will never stop growing this maize because it was given to me by God. I really get upset that a man, a person, an organization can take it upon themselves to dictate to everybody in the world how they should live their lives, what they should eat, what seed to grow. What right do you have? You've got no right. And I repeat myself, you will not succeed. It doesn't matter how many people you kill in the process. But you are not going to succeed. And my husband and I will not stop growing this local seed. In fact, we are looking for bigger tracts of land where we can grow this on a larger scale. You don't intimidate us. We fear only God, not man.
هاف و فيديو <laughs> so petronella and that story really just says it all and that video was actually sorry that video was made in 2020 and it is still circulated i see it going through the whatsapp groups Mm. and it's had the most views and i just it it tells the story of exactly what we're facing now in zambia in fact um and is an example of of what's replayed throughout all of our policy levels from from local from the from the local 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 scale within chiefs palaces within district offices uh, at local seed festivals all the way through into our national policy making spaces to the african union and then to the U united nations spaces is is big business intimidating and uh, uh, shaping shaping narratives and and the impacts happen on the ground with farmers like petronella and her story keeps on being circulated because people keep on saying you know this is the reality that farmers are facing Petronella's seeds are so in demand in Zambia, and yet she is policed and hounded. And the selling of her seed, unless she certifies it through the particular standards and processes, means that sharing her seed is illegal. Selling her seed is illegal in Zambia, and increasingly in the laws that we are currently facing, is that, that, that these kind of seeds are no longer accessible on our markets. And so, so this is so th these are the struggles that farmers are facing facing across Zambia at the moment, the particular uh, policy crisis that we're facing, and then through uh, across the region and the African Union as well. I can share more on that if needs be. Yeah, that's that's really amazing, and um, I think it brings me to just yesterday uh, we had a, a dialogue with Swati. And realizing that the government there is sort of now aligning with farmers. Um, do you think this will ever happen in our region? And <laughs> how is that progressing? Because imagine if we had even 100 petrolen petronellas, you know, the type of passion and clarity that she's portraying, you know, and she says she does get emotional because this is not only an issue that is far-fetched, the impact on women and children, women's health um, is quite evident. These days, everybody's got some hormonal problems. Everybody's got mm. some, lots of, lots of women's problems, actually. Um, so that is, um, the video is so deep and moving, but like, what would it take for our government to really hear? You know, you said, imagine if we had 100 petronellas. There are 100 petronellas. There are thousands of petronellas. Yes. There are thousands. Certainly, yeah. And, and I mean, this is this is what we celebrate. But this speaks to both the, the, both the power of the growing movement as well as the power of the policy lock-in that we are facing. And what's also incredible is that there are amazing policymakers who we work with in all of our countries. I mean, they are the ones who come to our seed fairs and buy farmers' indigenous seed to take and to plant in their own gardens and really then often go back, you know, and sign in the very same laws that are making those very same seeds illegal. And this is because... For instance, in Zambia, the way our policies are being formulated is because of these invisible hands that are coming down. Um, and and really, the harmonization processes in Africa, that the capture at the United Nations level, level by the likes of AGRA, the likes of multinational corporations, lobby groups, um, and we saw it from the, from the UN Food Systems Summit, into the African Union, the push for biotechnology and harmonized seed guidelines in the African Union, and then down at country level, 
uh, the way that seed laws um, and agricultural policies continue to get shaped towards continuing to push and prioritize and subsidize the industrial food system rather than funding agroecology. So yes, there are there are hundreds and thousands of farmers who are standing up uh, and who are saying, you know, this is my seed uh, and this is my food. And, and the My Food is African campaign across the African continent is really making that prominent at the moment and, and linking these. But these lock-ins with seed, with genetically modified organisms, and again, the same policies there that exist uh, with the use of, of highly hazardous pesticides and increasing use, this package of the Green Revolution technologies, together with all of the policies that exist that lock farmers and consumers uh, into the industrial food system. And I mean, recently in the last year, there's been a very profound process happening in Africa with the post Malabo agenda. So the, the new roadmap for the development of agriculture on the African continent. And from every single region, everyone was saying agroecology, 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 farmer-led seed systems. These are the basis that we need to support in order to achieve food sovereignty, in order to achieve climate justice, to have a just transition, that this is the basis that we need to be supporting. And yet, at the last minute, all of this was stripped out. So so this is this is really evident. And our policymakers yeah. know. They know it. And, and really so this is the power of the, the external institutions. I'm just going to pick a little bit on what you said, that the policymakers, those who sit in the policy tables, they come to buy agroecologically grown seeds. I think it's a, it's a very strong statement that really speaks to the rigidity of the institutions as a being. And, mm. and how there seems to be so little that... Uh, human <laughs> friends mm. can do to change um, whether it's because we're in debt as countries or we're really controlled by the money of the big corporations it's quite um it's quite sad you know as a as a as an occurrence um and the fact that in 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 the documentation of the post malabo we were totally ignored after so much noise was made about it it's it's you know I guess the struggle will continue. <laughs> the struggle will continue and and is is building. And yes, the the debt, the neocolonial control of our countries, uh, this is insidious and this is everywhere. And I mean, we see now Agra, you know, all of our climate fi financing, all of our donor financing, instead of going to fund farmers and infrastructure for agroecology and the transition on the ground, is going now to fund multilateral agencies, international finance agencies, and the likes of uh, FAO in country, AGRA in country, to do our policy work, to implement our so-called adaptation strategies, to be implementing our, our climate adaptation, uh, handing out beehives in local areas. I mean, the FAO and AGRA have no place to be doing this, and yet this is what's happening, and it is sidelining local civil society organizations and farmer organizations that exist on the ground, people's own agency, they know what they need for themselves. And this has been sidelined because of the capture of not only our policies, but our financing instruments. And so, yeah, this is this building, this bottom-up movement, and why the people's movement, like the, the what we are celebrating on World Food Day, really is about noticing and recognizing this bottom-up power that is saying enough is enough and reclaiming our own seeds and our own food. And we've recently had the most remarkable process in Harare, Zimbabwe, your own home country, yeah. where we in fact brought uh, in a convening together with Pelham Zimbabwe leading it and the Zimbabwean organizations who annually host the Good Seed and Food Festival, which is just the most remarkable gathering uh, of celebration and music and farmers and people coming together in Harare. 
uh, that we have been wanting to visit and convene for many, many years. And this event culminated with the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa's uh, Biennial Food Systems Conference and the Agroecology Fund's uh, learning event. So everyone was coming together from across Africa to this convening in Harare. And the Seed and Knowledge Initiative supported farmers from across the Southern African region, from Malawi, Zambia, South Africa, and Zimbabwe. Over 100 farmers and civil society organizations convened together in Harare for this event uh, to celebrate 10 years, actually, of the Seed and Knowledge Initiative's work. Uh, but also to celebrate the what we're calling the Our Seeds, Our Rights, Our Lives campaign by farmers. Uh, and this was really at the forefront of this was a, a statement that farmers had developed in a process two years prior in Zambia on a farmer's rights campaign and seminar that had happened in Zambia. And so these kind of things are moving over the years. You know, this process happens in Zambia. Farmers come together. They dialogued for two weeks. They had an incredible exchange program from across the region. They came together and they developed a statement themselves of their demands around farmers' rights and the support that they are needing. This was taken and delivered, in fact, into the international treaty meetings in Rome last year. And then that statement actually came back and we refined it and reworked it in Harare uh, in September. And then it was read again uh, at an event, a public event in Harare and linked to the Seed and Food Festival, where we all gathered and celebrate and learnt from Zimbabwe. So these are the kind of festivals, these coming togethers that are building a lot of momentum on the ground and really do that really do show the evidence of of this abundance that that is that is growing and and re, being revived in Africa, led by farmers. And I think the 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 gathering that happened in Harare this year, there were lots of farmers also just from all over Zimbabwe, even from our region. That's like twelve hours bus drive away. Fourteen farmers went and also attended. We took part in the agroecology funds uh, gathering. You know, there's lots of knowledge building that is happening. Strategy. And some of the strategies, mm. as we've been chatting, includes involving markets, the agroecological markets, youths in action, like farmers in action. It feels like everyone's really pulling every muscle together and that the funding space and the funding world, we are sort of getting really good recognition. It felt like we really created a big, um, big cloud and big mm. statement by everyone coming mm. to support Zimbabwe in their National Seed and Food Festival. But, you know, that's the core part of our life. So it's really exciting. And um, knowing that you're also a big part of the Seed and Knowledge um, Initiative and AFSA, we would like to say congratulations on, on the camaraderie that, is, um, that has been expressed and happening. Um, yeah, I think they'll start to feel the heat. I think they already are. It's quite a big threat. <laughs> They are, and this is happening, I mean, as I was saying, you know, around the seed and food festivals as well, but also, you know, what's really important around the 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 movement around soil fertility and around reclaiming soil fertility as farmers. And this has really been very evident in the in the spread of biofertilizers across the African continent. You know, there were just a couple of trainings that happened in spaces across the regions on the continent, and this has just organically spread farmer to farmer, community to community, people are sharing this. And this is actually about reclaiming, again, control over production, over soil fertility, the means to life back in farmers' hands. And this is why biofertilizers are so, are so important. And also why we need to continue not only our work that seed remains in the hands of farmers, that soil fertility remains in the hands of farmers. And a lot of multinational corporations are now advertising organic fertilizers, the production themselves of organic alternatives to synthetic fertilizers, organic alternatives to, to pesticides. Whose hands are these in? Is this changing business as usual? Or is this just continuing to extract life and resources from this African continent? And so everything that we do, the foundation really of agroecology as a science, a practice and a movement is around this political agenda to reclaim that that control. 
Power and this is where <laughs> this is yeah. where this incredible work of farmer to farmer movement building happens. And and where we see the incredible celebration happening is that these connections are being made mm -hmm. and it's reviving agency, people's agency on the ground. And so so this is happening, and this really is where change change will happen and change is being seeded. And that's where the power lies. And mm -hmm. that will really ultimately help us to achieve food sovereignty rather than just continue to potentially if we are lucky produce more feed food to increase to, to feed our our population yeah but at what cost at what cost? at what cost yeah our yeah. continent cannot survive any longer we are suffering from the worst drought and humanitarian crisis in our region than yeah. we have in decades yeah. Because of climate change, because of biodiversity loss, because of the very same industrial agriculture systems that have destroyed our land and our communities and our lives. And people recognize this. And this must change. And it is changing. And celebrations like what's happened in Harare uh, make that possible and make that visible. Wow. <laughs> this is so powerful and so moving power has mm. to change hands power is beginning to change hands um farmers are beginning to find a strategy because literally like you say the biofermented fertilizers you know and um the natural farming like we learned from andhra pradesh small gatherings online and then someone tells the next person and then we are all ablaze doing that thing and I think we'll get to a point where our voices can no longer be ignored because so many people have jumped in. Imagine if we got in as well, the consumers who are already starting to be aware. Most people now are buying in agroecological territorial markets than the highway supermarket. So I mm. think that awareness and the move is, is really being felt. Practice the science and then is informing the movement of everyone who is consuming food and everyone is <laughs> so yeah no really i mean thank you francis um i don't know if you have another I... thing to share and then uh we can wrap up our dialogue that would be awesome thank you i just really want to share actually end by sharing a small clip from the harari good food festival uh and that brings all of this together that yeah. brings our seed back together with farmers and the joy of eating and consuming and growing our own food, of coming together in celebration, and really the demands by farmers that we need to fund agroecology now. Yes. Not part fund industrial agriculture and part fund agroecology. All funding needs to be directed to agroecology on the ground now in order to help farmers to adapt to climate change urgently. And so this really is the demand of farmers. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that we're coming together as a, as a, as a globe mm -hmm. to recognize this around the world and, and, and celebrate that through the people's movement. So thank you so much. And let me close by sharing this movie. Thank, thank you, you so much. Yes, we're ready. Thank you, Precious. Such a refreshing video. <laughs>
Amoy amoy with one heart. <laughs> one yeah. heart. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Francis. And um, we really look forward to learning more from you and we look forward to sharing this with the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's an absolute honor to be here. Thank you. Thanks.